Nani sore sui sui sho damada. What is that? It is water crystal ball. Kore karawa omae ga kore o. Mai nichi migaku no da zo. From, he from here. From here on out, you will wipe Migaku. You will wipe this every day. Perfect. Bye, Michi. Um, kinu igai. Kinu igai de migai de wa naran. Do not wipe using anything other than silk. Hiyo, hiyo men ga kumote sukae naku naru karana. Because the surface the surface will become cloudy the, the because when the surface become cloudy it will be unusable Sky I, because the surface will come become cloudy so it will be unusual usable perfect um, out of curiosity, is this first kanji here pronounced as hiyo or hyo? Hyo. Hi, hyo. Perfect. Ore wa unazuita. I nodded. Mm, yes. Machutsu shi no deshi ni. Hapitari no shigoto da. Hi, this right here is niwa, and then it's pittari. Pittari. No shigoto da. A good, this a fitted job for an apprentice magician. Perfect. Or a uh, magician apprentice. Nebari wa sono suisho dama o. Isu no yoko no jutan ni soto oku to sarani san sarani mitsu mitsu no tsutsumi o haraita nebari softly plays I'm sorry. When nobody softly place places on the carpet next to the chair, the water crystal ball, uh, he unwraps three. He uh, he further. He he further unwraps or he unwraps an additional three. Hi, I think additional three is a better way of putting it in the sentence. Hi. Hi. Um, what did he put on the carpet? He put here it's sui sho o. Hi, 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 hi. Yep. He put the crystal ball on the carpet. Um dore mo sui sho damada. Um, susumi o hirai hiraku tabi ni dete kuru dama ga okiku naru. Whichever crystal ball it is, whenever 
tabini when ev for every every instance every time he opens the cover the covering um the ball that came out is larger or it's not is larger but here he uses naru so well, you sure you know what it means. Each ball that comes out is larger than the last ball. Hi. Saying um, they get bigger and bigger as the balls come out of the okay. wrapping. Hi. It gets it gets bigger than the than than the previous. Um, ore, ore wa hiza o suite nozoki konda. Hisa oh suite. So he's a refer to his knees and he suite. That means that he's he's got down on both of his knees. Hi. Down on his knees, and he peek. He nozoku. He nozoki konda. He peek into. Right. Any idea I, what he's peeking into contextually? Here we are. Get, we, he's looking at the sui shodama. He's Aye, looking perfect. into the dama. The suisho dama de nani ni nani ni sukaun da zo daro daro. What is the use of this crystal ball? Suisho dama kore. Wait, what does daro mean? Daro, I wonder. I wonder hi, what hi, it is of the crystal ball. Kore donna fu ni sukaunda. 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 This, what is the manner for use? In what way can it be used? Perfect. Donna fu ni sukaunda. Suishodama toste skau as a to be used as a crystal ball. Yep. A crystal Zen, ball is used as a crystal ball. Hi. Zen zen kotae ni natte nai. That is not an answer. That is completely oh. not an answer. Exactly. Perfect. I have to clear my window first. Now we got some checking if you remember what these words mean. What does nagameru mean? Chan chagande chagande nagame terita nagame 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 Darake na no wa susu. Nagame. I think I think to bend or to Sagande means to bend. To specifically it's to um crouch. Hi. Nagame do doesn't that have anything to do with um shagande? Um specifically in this context there was a abure that was on the floor. So the main character shagande first. In order to nagameru at the abura-e. What do you think nagameru means? He's... Was that to look? To, to It is a kind of look. Specifically, it's to gaze, right? You don't yeah. look at pictures. You gaze at pictures. Because pictures are pretty. Hi. Okay. Kind of looks, you know, he's looking at the whole thing rather than looking at a specific point on the picture. He's looking at the overall painting. Um, how about darake? What does darake mean? Such as susu darake. Susu darake no no wa. So here, susu was the soot. Hi. Darake is to smear on, right, mommy? Mm, not really. Um, that'd be more like mamire. Um, so we saw susu mamire, for example, with mamire right here, meaning to smear. Mamire. Darake is very similar to the word ippai. Ah, 
full of something bad. Also full of something bad. So it's full of soot. And soot is something that we do not want in this case. Perfect. So let's go read the line from the book. Nabari wa ichiban ooki suisho dama o te ni tori. Chikuri to nagameta. Nebris he possesses teni tori. I would translate this literally in this context. He grabs Hi. He, into he, his hand. Hi. He takes he takes. Hi. He takes a, a one of the large uh crystal ball. No, no, Ichiban is the largest. I'm sorry. Yes, Ichiban, Ichiban is the largest. I... He, he takes the largest, or he took he took the largest crystal ball and he gazed at it. Hi. Uh, and jikuri. what do you think jikuri means? So you said G G is also. this action of nonstop. Something yep. Is yep. Jikuri comes from jitto. You'll see that a lot. So he stare, stare at it unblinkingly. Kuri possibly might come from kuri kaise. Maybe to repeat. Um. Yeah. That's the G. He gazed at it unblinkingly. So so. Um. It seems suspicious. I'm gonna actually go over here real quick. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. It wasn't suspicious. Um. I'm just checking for this kanji. You know how to read it? Hmm. Oh, I forgot about this one. Hono. This kan yep, hono. Perfect. Flame. Nice. Kokeru. Kogeru. Sorry, he pronounced this one wrong. Get. Kogeru is to be burnt. Kogeru. And this is a do verb. Normally you hear koketa, right? Because it means to be burnt. Um, so kogeru theoretically would be will be burnt, which um is a little bit odd. So what does this mean? That looks a lot like the kanji for fish. Kogeru. Yep, kogeru. Perfect. Like, a lot like you burn up your fish so that this so half of the fish is unable to be eaten. <laughs> Money, what is the negative form of this? Is it kogarenai? Uh no, wait. Kogeranai? It just be kogenai. It is Kogeru. a root verb. Hi. So whenever it's the root verb, all we do is drop the root. Hi, to make negative form. The Go only kogenai. time that we hear the ah sound, anai or ranai or manai, is when it's an u verb. Correct. Um with passive and potential form we do da de do for do verbs so we do get that ah uh, in that case and causative form is sa seru for do verbs um we do get that da de do there but for this plain negative nai versus anai for uh anai being u verbs and nai being do verbs what is the te form of to be burnt, will be burnt? Te form. Ko will be. Will be? Ko, ko, ko get, ko get that. Hi, ko get that. Hi, no glottal stop. Ko get that. Um, our next verb, aburu, is basically to roast. To cook with the flame. Got a little fire kanji in there, which is nice. Aburu. Now, aburu is a u verb. So this would get anai, right? So aburanai, right? right? Because it is a u verb. Right. What is the passive form of aburu? Aburareru. Right. Aburareru. 
to be cooked, to be roasted. Let's go read this line from the book. Suisho dama ga aburarete kara. Yo, yo men ga kogete iru. So, kara here come after the te form of the verb aburarete. So, it means after the actions. Hi. So, after roasting the crystal mm. ball. After the crystal ball was roasted. Hi. The surface. Koget de iru. It, it, it is um, burnt. Hi, it is burnt. Perfect. But here the iru describes the state. Of being burnt, so yes, it is, it is burnt right of, at this moment. It is in the state of having in the been state burned. of burn. Okay. Yeah, um, theoretically, you say coqueta. Um, this tends to work better if you're using this as a relative clause. So you would say "kyomen no coqueta suishotama" to mean the butcher ball that was burnt. Um. But doesn't that imply that it's no longer in that state of... Normally it does, but there's a little bit of exception for relative clauses with ta form. Um, a lot of times you'll see just ta form. But if you ended this sentence with koketa, that would feel a little bit like it might not lo no longer be burnt. Saying it was burnt versus it is currently has a burnt surface. You don't really say teiru very often with relative clauses, um, especially with um, passive verbs. I don't. That's not the right word. It's a transitive and transitive verb thing. Um, but normally with these kind of verbs, you don't really say te do when it's in relative clause form. Instead, you say ta form. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure grammatically why that's so, but kokete do um suisho tama feels a little bit like a mouthful to say. <laughs> I guess why <laughs> we just turn into kokete a little bit easier um, um but you do use te, te do forms for other types of verbs like the person that was running would be te do right so more active verbs still do it but i'd say more or less active verbs tend to not um okay how do we read this kanji again oh no perfect okay so let's go read the line from the book Okano Tama Tochi Ga De Okano Tama To Chigate Hono De Abuta Mitai Ni Hyogen Hyo Men Ga Oh, it's not Hyo, it's like Yo, Yo, Yo Men, Yo Men Ga um, Kura. Kuro, kuroku, kuroku kokete, kogete iru. So, hoka no tamato. Hoka, hoka is this, guessing he's referring to the one that is in his possession, right? Hi, that's not hoka. what hoka means, but that is the subject of the sentence is the crystal ball in my hand or his hand actually never is. Hand. that is the subject of the sentence which has been dropped uh because it was in the it was defined in the previous sentence so that so it'd be sono suisho tama ga hoka no tama to chigatte is our sentence but this has been dropped so hoka just mean that on so hoka you might hokano has this kanji hoka hokano um and it means other for example tanin tanin means other people like strangers tanin. so hoka hokano hito would mean other people so hoka no tama hoka no tama means 
the crystal balls that are not the crystal ball we are currently talking about. So it's the other crystal balls. The other crystal ball. 他の玉と as for the other crystal ball, 違って。違って。違う。違う。違う。They are, they differ. はい。In other words, we are talking about the state of that ball. The previous ball that was examined by n e b u r i was in the state of being burnt. These are different. The other ones are different.、Um, not sure what you're talking about. So,、um, just about how you worded that was weird. So, we'll start just with this. Um, what is the subject based off of the particle being used here? Hoka no tama to chigatte from chigao. The subject here is the tama. Which tama? The, this tama? Hai. No. To does not mark subjects. To is a particle that marks quotations, can mark、um, and, or it marks、um, a. A cause and effect、uh, conjunction. Those are the three things to can mean, but to can never, ever, ever mark the subject. That is illegal. That is not allowed ever. Subjects are marked by ga and sometimes wa.、Um, and if it's not marked by ga or wa, it's just not in the sentence at all. It's been insinuated by context. So, this specific sentence, if you look at all the particles we have, Um, we do have a subject which is human, which is surface. However, I would assume that the first subject here is probably different than this subject because it's weird to compare a surface to hoka no tama because these are not the same thing. Why would you use hoka no? Why would you want to differentiate the tama from other tamas if we're not comparing it to tama? So, specifically, it's what the human is, that this human is attached to, which is a ball, right? So, the ball's human. So, this first paragraph here, the subject is Tama, specifically the Tama that n e b u r i is holding. n e b u r i has a Tama. Then, Hoka no Tama, that is referring to Tamas. On the floor. These tamas are relatively smaller than n e b u r i s tama because tama picked up, because n e b u r i picked up the biggest tama.、Um, so this is literally,、um, assuming if the subject was actually stated, is that n e b u r i s crystal ball and the other crystal balls were different. Does that make、right. sense?、Um, right. So th- So, how were they different? Because remember, our subject here, this human, is not referring to the Hoka no Tama, it's referring to the biggest crystal ball、mm. in n e v e r i s hand. So, here it s a y that the surface of, and, and we are, Understand by context that the surface of the the crystal ball that was in n e b u r i s hand is is burnt black. Hi. Like what ha- had happened to it? What do you think?、Um, so here it's Hono de Abu Abuta Mitai Ni. And ni, ni here marks that it's describing the, the verb、Hi. to get that it is. The way in which it was burnt. The way in which it was burnt. So it was burnt like mitai. It was burnt similar to being burnt by a fire. Right. And here you see we're using mitai because we're talking about the physical appearance. If something's burnt by the fire, the physical appearance of that object is what we're saying this crystal ball looks like. Versus if yoni was used, what would that instead be insinuating? The manner in which that、mm. action was conducted. Exactly. Perfect. 
So that might be more likely to use if they're talking about his heart, maybe like my heart was burnt as if I had been burned in a fire. Might use yoni instead to refer more of that burning sensation than the aftermath. Um, so perfect. Um, so what does the other crystal balls look like if the crystal ball nobody is holding is burnt black um, and it's, she got dead from them? So the other one is un unburned so, so untouched perfect the other ones are unburnt hi so we can we know for sure because to is marking this so we know that the subject the, the human we're referring to is not this one um because it wouldn't make sense to not have a link between the two clauses here that'd be like really random otherwise um you know all these kanji so i'm skipping that actually no, I'm going to ask you, what does nagameru mean? Nagameru, to gaze. Perfect, yep. Okay, we got quite a bit here, but our main focus is just watase, if you know what that means. But I bolded everything else in case you needed context. Watase is to hand over. Perfect, hand over. Nice, so let's go read the line from the book. Nebari wa sono sui dama o ore ni watashita. Nebari handed over the crystal ball to me. Perfect. Sky mono ni narami. And he said, uh, Do not narami. Sky mono ni. Hi. So, Nara, last time you saw it, you translated it as do not, and that was an okay translation. But Nara basically means shall not. That's more what it's saying. It's shan't. So, before he says, one shall not um, polish this with something that is not um, silk, was the sentence. So, here it's saying he's not really telling that him to do anything. He just, he's just saying that. This item shall not be a sky mono. <laughs> this is uh, what he's saying here. Sukai mono ni naran. It shall not be an item of use. Exactly. Mono, it's sort of an item. Perfect. Yep. It shall not be an item. Perfect. I just was going to see if they had the sentence there, but they do not. Um, okay. Do you know how to read this word, specifically the first part? This is the sleeves. Hi. The this cuff. Is the sleeve. Specifically the cuff, you are correct. It is the something Gucci. It has the... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Hi. This is pronounced as so de, so de guchi. So so de um, refers to um, the whole sleeve. And a so de guchi just refers to the cup, the mouth of the sleeve. So de. So I know de. you know this word, but I'm just double checking. So other than meaning pretty, do you know what the other meaning of this word is? Kirei na. Hi, it means clean. Perfect. That's how it's going to be used in the next um context. Um, gira tsu, gira ru. Yeah. Gira tsu. I was like, wait, it's not gira ru. Uh, in my defense, key and R are right next to each other on the keyboard. Gira tsu. This is to become coarse. Um, which is a rough texture. To get a rough texture. So normally a sui shotama. If you touch it, you know, it's going to be that smooth glass-like texture, right? So, giratsuku would be the opposite of that. That would be more like touching a rock, you know, like like granite, um, right. concrete. Giratsuku, which of course is a u-verb. What is the te form of giratsuku? Te form giratsuku. 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 Te form is... Kirasu, 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 
キラーキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーチキラーそのその水晶玉は表面がざらついていてざらついていてそうでで磨いてもきれいにならなかった。That crystal ball, the surface, zara suite, it is in the state of course. Hi. It is coarse. Zara suite, it is. So de de migaite mo. Even if, even if it was wipe. Using a sleeve, kire ni becoming clean, nara nakata. So, nakata here is did not become. Hi. So, since this means did not become, what can we assume happened with this temel rather than meaning if? What do you think? Like, did he? Do you think he? Wiped it with his sleeve or did not wipe it with his sleeve? Naranakata. He did wipe it, so, but so. it did not become clean. All right, so this became even when rather than even if. So normally, temo does mean even if. And the, really, the, the only way you can tell is by the tensing of the verb at the end. If it's past tense, we can assume the action occurred. So even when I did this versus if it's future tense, it's more likely if. Um, that's because, you know, if and when in Japanese is always the same word <laughs> when it's um a grammatical if. Of course, like there is the word if like nada. Nada is not really like when or moshi, right? Th those aren't really, those are all, those are the word if, but grammatically if. if. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going on a tangent. So yeah, if grammatically is, can it always mean when, when grammatically can always mean if. Um, Specifically, my focus here is the verb. Hodoite. You know what hodoku means? Hodoku. 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 I don't remember money. Hi. Okay. So this is something you do to tsutsumi. Um, earlier, we saw hiraku, which has the same use here. Tsutsumi wo hiraku, tsutsumi wo hodoite. From hodoku. For all intents and purposes, in this specific context, these would be the same meaning. You know what hiraku means? Hiraku, to open. To open. So hodoku basically also means to open. But specifically, hodoku is to unwrap, like to loosen wrappings is hodoku, to open something basically. Well, hiraku can be used for opening other items. Um, so you cannot um, hodoku a door. That would be weird. Um, so you can say the reason we're using hodoku here is because they already use hiraku and they want to, you know, use different vocabulary words, but it's basically the same in this context. How would you say wanted with the verb midu? So I wanted to see. Wanted to see. Me tai da. Tai da. That, um, you would yeah. never really say that. You could say me tai des, uh, if you, um, wanted to. Because theoretically, me tai is a e adjective, but you don't say tai da unless you wanted to say like dazo or something like daio. Like, I wanted to see that because you can't say mitai yo. Well, I guess you could say that. Want to see in the past form would be mitai kata. Perfect. Kata. 
。見たかった。Okay, remember how to read this kanji that's folded? Array. Um, it does look a lot like a like example, like betsu. Um, betsu, hi, different, perfect. Um, what is the stem form of hodoku? Hodoki. Perfect. Hodoku. And what did hodoku mean? Doku, to loosen something. Perfect. So let's go read this example sentence. Tsusumi o hodoki ni kakata. I began unwrapping. I began loosening the, the wrapping. I began unwrapping the wrapping. I guess you can just say we. I began unwrapping. I was like, there's more words in Japanese than in English in that context. <laughs> Uh, so I was like slow to say perfect. Um, so let's go read the line from the book. Hey,元を見たかったのに、粘りはささっと。レッツの包みを解きにかかった。元 is one more. Hi, もっと um like もう一度 would be like one more time. Moto, you know, just like mo just means more. The difference is that moto is used with past tense verbs and mo when it means more is used with um future tense, right? Like moto tabetai when mo 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 tabet mo ichido itte kudasai. Uh please say it again. Um they they both mean more, but they're used like I guess moto is quantity more and mo is like event mo. So like me doing that's is a quantity rather than being um one set of actions is the actual difference. Um, um but mo can only use mean more future tense. But yeah, it, it just means more. In order in order this is, I want to see one more. Mm -mm. Where'd the one come from? I'm sorry. I want to see more. Hi. No ni. Because I want to see more. Because I wanted to see more. So, uh, no ni is not because. I, <laughs> I'm thinking about um no de, which is a very weak because. Um, no ni means even though. Even though I wanted to see more. Even though I want to see more. Even though I want to see more. Nebari sasato retsu no tsutsumi o hodoki ni kakata. Nebari started unwrapping the rest one by one. Perfect. Sasato. So what the rest would be no kori. What does it specifically say here with bete? Uh, he say the rest is no kori. Retsu betu. is the next one. That'd be tsugi. Betu is very similar to hokano. Ka. This hokano, betu theoretically is a na adjective that tends to take no instead of na. Um, but hokano and betu no. This means the different, um, the other. So it just yeah. says the other wrappings, uh, he begins to hodoki. Begins to unwrap the other wrappings. And he does that basically right after he gives it to the main character. He sasatos it, which means he does it promptly without delay, basically. So all together, what does this line say? Despite wanting, even even though I wanted to see more, nobody immediately unwraps, began unwrapped, or he began unwrapping the others. Perfect. Um, and how do you read this word? So that. Perfect. 
And do you know how to read this word? Sugi. Perfect. And what does sugi mean? The next. Perfect. So our next word is hachi, um, which can mean a pot or a bowl. Um, I'm not sure which it is in the context. I would lean toward bowl based off of um, what it's made out of. Um, but it, it can, ref but you know, like you basically picture that kind of idea. It could be a pot, could be a bowl. You don't know for sure. Um, it doesn't matter because <laughs> it's the same word. Um, I would guess bowl by context, but if you said pot, that'd be fine. Um, can you read this example sentence for me? Suki no tsusumi kara hachi ga dete kita. Suki no tsusumi kara hachi ga dete kita. The bowl from the wrap, from the next wrapping came out. Hi, from the next wrapper, from the next wrapper, there was. Right, since it came out, uh, which it's it's fine. Uh, English is just weird. Um, I just want to say there is that from that, but it is it came out. Um, kame kame is an animal. Specifically, it is a turtle. Kame. Can you read um the sentence for me? Deshi wa hachi kara. Kame o deshite ita. Des? Desu? Da, dasu. Das. Hi, hi. Here is also mean come out. So, so, but the, the difference, you know, yeah. deru is ga, dasu is o. All right, takes out. The apprentice tech or he took, he took out the turtle from the bowl. Perfect. Can you read this for um, noun for me? Uh, kora. Hi. A lot of times you'll just see the kanji ko and then ra and hiragana just because um it depends like on the age graphic of course but da in general is a harder kanji. <laughs> so a lot of times you'll see the ko because this is an easy kanji um versus ra. But kora is the shell of an animal. Um, nor, not, not a seashell, um, but like a turtle shell. Um, so let's go read the line from the book. Suki no tsutsumi kara wa, from the next wrapping, kame no kora de dekite iru toyu. Right. You know what de dekiteru means? De 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 de. Right. De I did not make a grammar point for this. Deki dekiteru, dekiru, dekiru. De dekiru. So the verb is dekiru, which means normally to be able to. That is the first meaning you learn of the verb dekiru. There is a second meaning of dekiru. Which happens when you use de with it. De dekiru. Um, it's kind of like its own grammar thing. This is officially um N4 grammar. <laughs> Randomly I'm Googling it. Um just today for some reason. Not for this point. I was like double checking the difference between um dekiru and deteiru, um, which is basically the same. The difference is that this is more specific. So we're specifically talking about this specific hachi is de, de that's why de but if you're talking about things in general, then you'd use um dekiru. Um, but anyway, uh the second meaning is to be made from. Yeah. Dekite. Right. Yeah. So um you hear this dekiru when people are pregnant. So in Japanese you'd say koromo ga dekita. I had a baby. Um it's not deta, baby did not come out. It is uh dekiru meaning to have made. I made a baby. Um, we don't use the de in that context. And we don't need to go into details of how the baby was made. <laughs> but uh, dekiru means to be made. 
Um, so, uh, <laughs> that that deki that deki to mean to be made with. That deki that either is in the state of being made with. Hi. No. Um. So you you would assume that, but which is why I was I I vaguely talked on this. Um. De dekiru and de dekiteru, funnily enough, is the exact same tense for this to be made from meaning to be made from. In general, they're interchangeable, and normally you'd be right, that'd be the difference, but not in this very specific use of the word uh, dekiteru and dek dekiru. Um, if the iru is not here, right, and it's just dekiru, that means this is made in general from that. So you might say like, in general, houses are made from bricks. Then you'd use dekiru, right? Houses are made from bricks. That uses dekiru. But if you're like, my house is not made by bricks, you would use de, um Dekite e nai, right? Because you're being specific. You're talking about my specific house versus houses in general. So it's an exception to like normal classifications. The difference is uh, what we're describing. Um, you could kind of argue that it's the habitual tense, right? That's dekiru. So habitual is talking about how most things are made from. Versus um, de ki te i do is the current tense talking about the current item we are talking about. So rather than being future and current, it is habitual and current. Does that make sense? Future. Right. Okay. Like I go on hikes means I go on hikes habitually, not I will go on a hike tomorrow. Right. So in English, habitual tense and future tense, you know, are marked different, right? We add the word will to mark future. And in most sentences, we add a pro an S like to walks. So I go on walks often, right? That's our habitual tense. It happens often. It happens in the past and it will probably happen in the future. So dick you do in this context with the being made from refers to the habitual tense rather than the future tense, which was what you were guessing when you saw this. Because normally we see future tense more often than habitual tense, just because that is more common uh, in stuff, like to wrap your head around, because habitual is a weird word. Okay, so what is the hachi made from? A bowl. And here's toy you is used as a definition, right? Hi. Uh, so this at uh, toy you can you help me with this one? So in this sentence, toy you doesn't mean mm -hmm. meaning. Toy you, it is... means what it always means in this context. Whenever you see toy you modifying a noun, its meaning is always exactly the same. Um, there's different ways you can translate it into English, which can be easier. Such as um, if there's a name, then a lot of times you will translate toyu as called. But that's not actually what toyu means. Toyu means to define as, and that's how it tends to be used in this book. So all it says is that we're defining the bull as being uh, dictated. A bull that is defined as. It's like the most literal way we could translate this as far as like a nice translation would go i just would not translate the to you <laughs> i don't think we would use that um in english um and in japanese you don't actually need the to you here either this could have been dropped and it would still be basically the same um they're just this gives more spacer here than um if not um, I would assume maybe it makes it more obvious that the kame no, that the no here is not ga perhaps or something. It'll makes it more easier to read. But all, all it's saying is that we have a bowl and I'm going to define this bowl as having the quantities of this. Um, for example, when we learned about yami kui hebi, yami 
yamikui heavy. It was not yamikui heavy to you heavy. That was not the sentence that we saw this in. Instead, we were defining what the heck it is who a yamikui heavy was. So it was to you over here. And the item over here wasn't a name. It was an action. It was hito o os to. Something like that. Which is um, defining this right here, a darkness eating snake, as something that attacks human beings. So if you didn't have to you here, this would just mean um, the snake that attacks um, different things. So toyu is just acting as a definer to make it more obvious that we are we we think you might not know what this is in the context. So we're making sure to define it. Um, Hachi is pretty random, right? It, it's just a random bowl. It's not a sui shotama. It is a random pot or bowl. So they're just being more specific with defining this item than um, if they were just describing the item. So rather than saying the bowl that was made out of this, it's saying this bowl that which was made of this or something like that. It's, I just I don't think there's an easy way to translate that into English. But all to you is means I'm defining this with this quantity. Um, this is the quantifier, the describer of that. So, which is normal, which can be a name. Um, and that's what we saw, I think, not that long ago. And that's why you had that in your head, maybe to be called, but it it's not always do that. It's like, for example, we saw roji to you roji. Roji to you roji is another um, thing we saw in this book, which is to define an alleyway as an alleyway. This was used to mean all alleyways. Because if you would find an alleyway and you would say that is an alleyway, then everything that goes underneath those qualifications, that's what we're talking about. So that's used to mean all. If you would call it an alleyway, then I'm talking about it. Roji to you roji, which is defining an alleyway as an alleyway. So that's uh, what it is. But I think in general, to you just doesn't translate directly into English. And you just kind of have to say it's defining the thing. Because that's all it's really doing. Hi. So here it says the bowl that was made from the shell of a turtle, it came out. Of what? It came out of the next wrapping. Sugi no Tsumi. Cut up. Perfect. Um, Saya is our next noun. Saya is um, a scabbard which um, in case you have a brain fart for what that is, that is the thing that you put like knives and swords in, right? So you got a knife, you put it inside of this. Normally they're made out of like leather or something, but they could be made out of anything. Like there's wooden scabbards and stuff. Um, metal, I don't know. Metal's probably bad. That'd probably hurt your ears. But basically it's just that, it's a sheath. That's the other word that's called. But it's, it's just the container that holds um, a sharp object. Um, can you read this word for me? Um, yen kami. Hi, gin kami. Gin. gin kami. And what does gin mean? Gin means silver. Perfect. Can you read this for me? Saya iri. Perfect. So right here, rather than being Heidi, it is pronounced as iri. So we got that irregular reading here for sayaidi. And this means kind of maybe what you could guess what it would mean. It means that something has been inserted inside of a sheet or a scabbard. Um, so sometimes if you're shopping stuff in Japanese, you might search this word if you want to get a knife that comes with a scabbard. So it basically means something has been inserted inside of the casing. Um, can you read this example sentence for me? Saya iri no gin no knife wa kumote eta. The knife gin gin. 
the knife of silver Aye. that was inserted in the scabbard or Aye. that was in the scabbard. Yep. It it is cloudy. It is Perfect. cold. It was cloudy. Um, do you know what kawa means? Kawa means skin. It can mean skin. That is correct. Normally you will see um this kanji for kawa, which is um skin. Specifically, we saw this, I think, in this book referring to the skin of the item they were eating. Um, this kawa right here, which has slightly different kanji, means leather, which is also a kind of skin, right? This leather, leather is made normally from cow skin, I think, um, from tanning the hide of an animal for clothing. It's kawa. So leather's skin that has been tanned. So how do you read this kanji? Kanji is kawa. Perfect. So, um, what does hodoite mean from hodoku? Hodoite is hodo is to unwrap. Perfect. Um, and let's go read this example sentence. Here it says, hodoita tsutsumi kara, from the wrapping that was unwrapped, kawa no sak sayao hori dashita. I took out a uh, a uh, sheath, a sheath of uh, skin of leather, actually. Yes, a leather sheath. Um, saying it of skin sounds creepy. <laughs> uh, here is our last line of the book. I mean, last line of the day. Hi. Um. Sono sugi ni kodo ita tsumi kara wa kawa no sayai iri no sukoshi kumo da gin no knife. So here's an example of using komotta rather than komotte ita or something like that. Komotte iru would be more accurate in this context. It is currently komoru because it's a relative clause here. Hi. So here it say that sono sugi ni hodo hodoita tsutsumi kara wa from the wrapping that was unwrapped uh sono sugi ni it's at, at the next one um so what do you think the next is referring to sono sugi ni sono sono sugi ni um, that next item Hi. that was unwrapped basically so the first item he unwrapped not that long ago was um, a bowl right a bowl made out of uh, kamen or koda but now the next thing that he hodokus is something else it's not a hachi what is it Hi. here it's it is a knife knife gin no knife it is a silver knife that was clouded, a little bit clouded. Sugoshi kumota. Hi. A little bit clouded. Um, and it is off. It is um inside. It is inside of a leather uh sheath. Perfect. Yep. Weird how the main character knows that the knife is uh, clouded, considering it's in a sheath, but. Hey, I guess um nobody probably like opened it a little bit to stare at the knife. But yeah, that is where we'll be stopping.